In the previous video you could see how I put this printer together, but in this video I want to show you step by step how I solved all the problems and what I still want to upgrade and change in the future. I started by designing the frame and the carriage that can move smoothly over the aluminium profiles, which will allow the X, Y and Z movements. Once the prototype had been tested and the dimensions were correct, I ordered the custom aluminium profiles and continued refining the printed parts. All 192 parts were sliced using Cura, and I used these settings to print them. To create the threads in printed parts, I used threaded inserts that I simply melted into the parts with a soldering iron. To assemble the 3D printer, I like to split it into different assemblies that will be combined into the complete printer later in the video. I'll start with the first part of the plating and that is the rotating holder that houses the touchscreen. And continue with the Z-stepper motor attachments. Now I assemble the left Z carriage containing the X-stepper motor and X-limit switch. Then I make the right Z carriage containing the belt tensioner for the X-axis. The Y carriage is equipped with ball bearings and wheels for smooth movement along the aluminium profiles. The heated bed is secured with M4 countersink balls and spacers will be also added later. The aluminium plate has M4 holes and countersink holes for mounting the power supply. I used a conventional milling machine to cut the holes in the aluminium profiles and used four different HSS cutters for this. And to tap the aluminium profiles I used an M6 tap. The frame is mounted with M6 hexagon socket screws. I make the holder for the Y stepper motor and mount it to the frame with M4 T-slot nuts. Here you can see one option of how to mount the Z-limit switch. I also make the Y belt tensioner and mount it on the other side. Now I make the carriage for the X axis which consists of the extruder, the hot end and the fan duct. I mount the carriage for the X axis on the X aluminium profile and tighten the timing belt. Now I mount the Y carriage on the Y aluminium profiles and attach and tighten the GT2 belt. The Z-stepper motors are mounted with M4 T-slot nuts for stable mounting. To assemble the extruder tower, I carefully screw the lead screw into the lead screw nuts. I mount the aluminium plate with 6 M4 hexagon socket screws. Then I connect the motherboard to the switch and the power supply according to this diagram. I made the cables myself with cable lugs. I also made a video about this. And I add a cap to protect the power supply connections and connected cables of all electronics to the motherboard. Cable brackets attached to the underside of the plate for a neat finish. Before I continue with completely finishing the printer, I will first test whether it works. I do this with an XYZ cube. This is the result of the first test and as you can see, the Z is wrong. I grease the lead screws so that there is not too much friction to allow the X profile to move in height with the extruder. Now I print the XYZ cube again and as you can see, cube looks much better now. I install a magnetic circuit board with a magnetic sticker to hold it firmly in place. I also add rubber feet to reduce vibration. I used Microsoft Visual Studio Code in the AutoBuild Marlin plugin to customize the Marlin software. I changed the dimensions of the build volume, the printer information and the boot logo. I will soon make an extra video about this. I am making a new holder with magnets to make it easier to level my print bed. I install the cable chain to protect the cables going from the extruder to the motherboard. I buy this camera module that is specially made to mount next to the warm nozzle. I made this holder for the camera module and two 12 volt LEDs because a camera needs a lot of light to make beautiful videos. Because the camera is mounted so close to the nozzle, I can take these cool videos with it. I also add plates to the bottom of the aluminium plate for safety and to make the printer look nicer. I also add a container where I can put the nozzle camera and other tools when I'm not using them. The printer is now ready, but there were still a few issues. The cable chain added too much weight, preventing the X-axis from rising. So, I increased the driver current for the Z-stepper motor. The nozzle was not clogged, but after 20 minutes of printing, no more filament came out. 
What I also found very strange was that when I kept pulling the filament out of the extruder, it melted in the wrong place as you can see here. On the left you see the normal diameter of the filament and on the right you can see that too. In between it has melted and you can see that because the diameter is smaller there. If we divide this piece of filament into three parts, we see that on the left side the hot end was, where it should normally be the hottest. In the middle you have the heatsink, where it should normally be colder. The third part is the extruder, which is indeed not warm and has a perfect diameter. For comparison, here is a normal piece of filament that I pulled from the extruder. On the left it is deformed, which is normal and on the right you can see that it has a perfect diameter, because that is where it was in the heatsink and extruder. I turned the fan on the hot end to blow cold air in instead of blowing warm air out. This is more efficient at cooling the hot end. And now my printers work perfect and I can finally start testing it. I started by printing a traditional test print, the 3D Benchy, and with the boat I could fine tune my settings. After this I printed a number of other things including this large vase. I also printed a small version of my pen holder on three different 3D printers to compare my homemade printer with. Of course, making this printer didn't happen the first time. And these are all the prototypes or test prints I needed to make this printer. You would now say that the printer works perfectly, but that is not quite the case. If you look closely at this video, you will see that the nozzle keeps moving up and down. You will also see different ridges on this part. This is because the PLA wheel has deformed over time, which you can see better in this animation. As you can see, the wheel is not round. This is of course enlarged because in real life it is only a few tenths of a millimeter. When the wheel rotates, you see that the nozzle moves up and down, which also happens in real life. My plan is to replace these printed wheels with the real wheels used on all printers. I'm also going to make a cap for the ZL carriage and I'm going to adjust the software so that I have a shortcut with the temperatures I use the most. You can download all the files from this printer via Cult3D. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe and I see you in the next video.